Hey everybody, it's another episode of uh, Reviewing Comics with uh, Alex Turbin and uh, doing the X-Mutants today. Uh, but before that, I'd like to show you some of the stuff that sponsors the, sh the show. Um, here's Random Access, uh, Mutandis, um, some more Random Accesses, Cyrene the Cleric. Um, these are titles, the Random Access you can get from Patreon. Um, I send out a 12-page full-color uh full comic size comic every month to my patrons and um it's only two dollars or you could go to my website at alexanderturban.com and uh you can get any of these things for relatively cheaply uh I, it's a dollar 25 for the 12 page random access that i i send out or 2.99 for a full 20 24 page uh comic for cyrene the cleric <clears throat> so X mutants um i remember i just read this and, and it's a it's a good fun read and it's, it's really it's a really good book <clears throat> um i remember when i was younger um because i probably i read this uh this came out in 1988 and i read it probably in 90 or 91 i, I got this uh graphic novel which is the first three issues of x mutants um they have spin-offs uh which are the new humans and um the wild nights and um i remember that my local comic shop uh didn't always have x mutants um they would get kind of random issues and um so i didn't really pick them up all that often uh when i went to boston or new york or whatever uh they really weren't on my my must get things so i, I kind of just picked them up uh you know dollar bins or or whatever um, so I have a few issues, but this is the big thing, the most that I have of the X-Mutants. Um, like I said, it was uh, created in 1988, uh, written by David Lawrence and uh, drawn by Ron Lim and inked by Tim Dizon. I, I hope I said that the name right. Um, and but so the story is about a um, after nuclear war, um, everyone basically is on earth is turned into a mutant or a mutate because a mutant is actually ch the child of somebody that, and has different uh, characteristics um so they're mutates mutants and mutates because they're all different from their their parents um and so in this new world they're all mutants and then this one scientist decides to uh genetically uh return all of these uh not all of these, but five of these uh, mutants, mutates, into uh, humans again. So they return back to their humanity. And uh, they hide in their, their little underground uh, lair. And while they're hiding, they these teenagers, because they're all teenagers, they learn uh, martial arts and, and sciences. And, and they get up into these all these hijinks and stuff. And um, it, it's very lighthearted and then when they come up into the world he the doctor thinks that uh the mutants that are up here are going to uh uh love the humans and want to become the humans and and think they're their salvations but really they get they attack the humans and um so he sends the the ex-mutants away in a car to go on adventures and spread the word of humanity or, or something i don't he says that he wants them to be an inspiration for what uh what humanity can can be um so there's a, a few things that don't make a whole lot of sense like why on earth he would think that um these uh freshly created beautiful people would be um adored by these zombie looking humans now uh nobody would think that nobody would think that that's that's just the craziest thing to to think that the, something um so horrid looking would would want to embrace the beauty of it and also another thing that i don't really understand is um they go into detail about how um the earth was destroyed by nuclear war and um uh it's all hot and and irradiated and and there's no food you can't grow food and the people in the cities are like starving and they're they're they fight for food that they're forage and stuff so why 
they obviously have been mutated um, to cope with this new environment. So why would you make humans that can no longer withstand the environment that they're in? So what he should have done is is like try to terraform the earth back to the way it was and then reintroduce humanity into into some sort of thing. But I digress. That's that's kind of a little a little thing. Um the writing um I'm very split on because on the one hand it's very Mad Max uh Road Warrior and and you can kind of see the influences that that would have on this and also RoboCop. You you almost can feel like it's a Paul Verhoeven uh, comic, something that he would do, like RoboCop, where you have the, uh, you know, all of the miscreants and and mutated people out in the uh, uh, outer rim, outer fringe of the city, and um, and they kind of talked wild like that. But the dialogue is very CW. It's very CW. Um, I kind of think that he's trying to mimic the X Men. Hence the X mutants. I I kind of feel like he's trying to make them into the X Men, um, but the dialogue is very CW ish, and like all of the girls are like in cute little uh, mini skirts, and and th their poses are like uh, they're very trying to be very trendy, and um, just their dialogue. Like one of them gets very upset. One of the X mutants gets very upset because she. She nicks a nail and um, just their, their kind of costumes and, and their dialogue and the way they express themselves is, is very CW and not how um, I kind of wish it was more Paul verhoeven -ish, where it was kind of um, saying something about society, um, saying something about uh, humanity and, and what they're going through, uh, putting a darker uh, humoristic spin on it. Whereas uh, he just kind of goes, like I say, the CW uh, kind of lightheartedness. Um, <clears throat> not to say there aren't themes um, in the in the comic. Is very uh, anti-war, anti-nuclear war. Um, there's there's some anti-racism plots going on, which is kind of shallow, but still they they do touch on it and how um, they're more they're more interested in how they look. And uh, here's here's another CW thing that almost would have crossed over into um, a Starship Troopers thing where they just they have sex, basically. And um, it's done in kind of a Starship Troopers kind of way uh, where it's like almost nonchalant. But also um, these these three are want to want to go and have sex with this dude, but they, they kind of don't want to. Um, so it's I mean, it it is what it is. The. The writing is not bad. It's not bad. It never takes you out of um, out of the the story, and you're always involved in what's going on, and you're involved with the characters, and you kind of care care about the characters. And the the plotting is very solid. It's it's um um it's it's very good. Um. So as for the art, Ron Lim. This was, I believe this was his first uh, published stuff. And you can see um, some of the things that he's going to develop later on. And I, I kind of noticed something. Um, he's, he's really he's spot on on a lot of things. He's, he's really great. But then sometimes he works these poses in that I suppose the, the writer was just like, make it sexy, uh, make it this, like this pose here is almost, he almost is like pre-image where he's trying to make it sexy, um, and superhero-y, but it ends up just kind of, mm, not, doesn't really hit it for me. But then there's other times that he, he really is, uh, stands out. And I, I'm recognizing that the times that I don't really feel like his art is the greatest and when it is when all of these panels are squished into this page. And um, some artists, they just thrive like this. I think this is one of the best the best pages. They just thrive when it's, you know, the artwork. Just throw, you know, like two or three panels, four panels. Um, and I feel like you just have, 
an art a writer should work with his artist and not try to uh just he try to uh work with their strengths and not with their weaknesses and i really feel like ron lem's weaknesses are shoving small things into um a lot of different panels sure it moves the story along but it's just not as nice looking it's not it's not as visually appealing um but his narrative art is great his action is great um you always know exactly what's going on when when to read what to you know what to look at you're you're not you know you don't need any arrows on the from the panels telling you where to read which is a, a huge flaw in some writers some some artists um renditions uh if you're not if your eye isn't freely flowing from panel to panel the way you want to go to then you know there's something wrong with your narrative art like this page you, you're going you know exactly where to go you know you're going from left to right to down you are left to right down down left right down so you automatically know that's what you're doing um but like like i said splash page he's he's got great splash pages if you're not or in here there's only five panels and it's great you know stop trying to constrict him into 15 friggin panels on a page because you're not seeing the best art that ron Lim can make you know here's some great narrative art is you know exactly what's going on but it's not you know it's not as appealing as it could be here's another great example there's only five five paid five panels on the page and it's perfectly rendered beautifully rendered so some stuff is is really fantastic some is a little weak here's here's a great panel shot where it's going from left to right and it's it's got lots of different action they're flying through the air with their car and they're they're flying out of the car and they're then they land the the last land landing spot is uh horizontally so and then this is the aftermath so he's he's got some really great narrative art going on so uh i would say that i would give this book a six and a half out of ten stars um it's solid and it's a fun read um but there's some flaws with it um when i read it now i don't really go back to the, uh 1988 in my mind i'm going back to a a paul verhoeven movie a starship troopers or or a um a robocop kind of type of thing and um which i kind of just wish that it was um it's here's a here's another great couple pages where he they just let him shine let let the artist shine doing what he does best don't try to uh uh crimp him up with too much story so uh and it's got really nice blacks you can you can see the uh everything in perfect detail um so yeah six and a half stars out of ten um if you like this video um and you'd like to check out more comic reviews and stuff uh, i have other videos up and um uh if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe i really really appreciate it um and have a great day see you later